My name is Jan Andersson. I work for Geisler, which is part of CASE Space Systems Division. The title of this talk is Radiation Hardening and Fault Tolerance Features of the Noel 5 Processor. We are one of the world leaders in embedded computer systems for harsh environments. We specialize in implementation of fault tolerant computers. And we provide a full ecosystem to support hardware and software design for space applications. So we provide ready-made components, uh, which are radiation hardened and fault tolerant. And we also provide IP core building blocks to allow our customers to do their own FPGA or ASIC implementations. We have been an, around for a number of years and Previously, our products were based around our Leon microprocessor, which implements the Spark instruction set architecture. And now we also have another processor model, the Novel 5, which implements the RISC-V instruction set architecture. This presentation is about designing systems for use in harsh environments, specifically space. When we deliver a component, for use in space applications, we need it to tolerate a number of different environmental effects. So during launch of a spacecraft, we need to survive vibration and shock. In the space environment, we have vacuum, we can have extreme temperature uh, changes, and we also have uh, radiation effects to take into account. Uh, and this presentation focuses on mitigating uh, radiation effects. So in order to protect against radiation effects, we rely on the implementation te technology to protect us against or to be resilient against permanent or destructive errors. We also depend on the implementation technology to tolerate long-term effects where you accumulate the radiation dose over time and this uh, changes uh, parameters in the silicon. So for example, you can see an increased power consumption and you can also see uh, change, a parametric drift in timing parameters due to the silicon being, becoming slower after uh, accumulating uh, uh, an ionizing dose. When it comes to SOC designs and what we implement using hardware description languages, we need to protect against transient or soft errors. So there are two main categories here. We have single event upsets, SEUs, that are bit flips in registers or in memory cells. And we have single event transients, which are spikes in combinational logic. So a spike can lead to an SEU. Uh, a spike can also trigger uh, an, in, an unintended reset of part of, of the design, or a spike could occur on a clock line, uh, leading to an unexpected clock edge occurring. The purpose of protecting a design with, uh, against radiation effects is to, uh, the end goal is to achieve an acceptable mean time between failures. And I've tried to describe the different approaches that we take here, and I've divided in them into ASIC and FPGA. So for an ASIC implementation, we make use of a hardened or screened standard cell library. And this is combined with layout rules to prevent multi-bit upsets, accumulation of charge in the silicon, etc. We also avoid using building blocks that may be sensitive, for example, complex uh, Implementations such as PLLs and CERDESs are typically sensitive against radiation effects and they need to be hardened. On FPGA implementations, there are two main approaches. You can use an, an FPGA which has been designed for use in space applications and then typically has uh, built in hardening against radiation effects. Examples of such products include the Vertex 5 QV from Silinx and the Microchip RTG4 and the Brave FPGAs from Nano Explorer. If you have an FPGA which is tolerant against uh, destructive uh, effects but still soft, uh, you may need to triplicate the FPGA design and you do that uh, using the EDA tool flow. Uh, but Doing this means that you can tolerate 
upsets in the FPGA's configuration memory, but at some point an accumulation of upsets will defeat that triplication. So one needs to be aware of this and you need to scrub the FPGA configuration memory to prevent an accumulation of errors. In both the ASIC case and in the FPGA case, you need to protect uh, on-chip memories because SRAMs are typically the, the most sensitive parts of, uh, of a design. And uh, there's a lot to gain uh, with being smart about protecting on-chip memories. Uh, triplicating memories uh, is a way to achieve a very good robustness, but it also has a large cost in that you will need to add two additional copies of each SRAM cell. Uh, I have a simple example of uh, what, what happens in a computer memory when a zero becomes a one. I developed this example in a, as part of a presentation that was targeted for school children, uh, specifically nine-year-olds. Uh, that wasn't a good idea. So uh, I figured that I would use it on this audience instead. So what we have here is a binary representation, what it looks like in computer memory when we have stored the number sequence 256 up to 259. Then our on-chip SRAM memory gets hit by a high energy particle and we have a bit flip in one of our SRAM cells. This bit position is worth 4096 and all of a sudden we have a large error uh, in our number sequence here. Uh, this is something that we need to protect against because that value can, uh, can control something which malfunctions and in turn leads to a catastrophic system failure. And looking at the layout of a typical microprocessor device, what we see here in yellow uh, are SRAM cells. So uh, a large part of our components are made up of these sensitive uh, areas. So when it comes to implementing fault tolerance systems and what we do in the Noel 5 microprocessor, to a great extent, this is protecting uh, uh, internal SRAMs against upsets. So speaking of the Noel 5 microprocessor, uh, I will go through the characteristics of, of this one and then move on to describe the fault tolerance features. What we have is a RISC-V model that implementation, at implementation time, we configure it to be a 64 or 32-bit processor. We support various extensions, including MA, FD, and C. Uh, and we have also recently added support for the H extension. Uh, the pipeline features include a seven-stage dual issue in order pipeline. And this is something that's also configurable at implementation time. You can select to have a dual issue pipeline executing up to two instructions per clock cycle or a single issue pipeline executing fewer instructions, uh, but also leading to a more area efficient implementation. The model is extensively configurable and in order to uh, have a way of providing a reasonable level of software support for this, we have defined a number of standard configurations. So the NOEL 5 can be implemented uh, in various configurations, but ranging from the what we have defined as the tiny configuration supporting uh, the 32-bit instru integer instruction set and also hardware uh, multiplication in a single issue pipeline without cache, without a memory management unit, without physical memory protection and no FPU. Uh, at the other end of the spectra here, we have the most high performing uh, configuration where we have a 64 bit implementation supporting the GCH extensions. We have a dual issue pipeline. We have a level one cache. We have a memory management unit. We support PMP. And we have a selection of two different floating point unit implementations, one which is pipeline high performance and one that is more area efficient. The full tolerance features that I'm going to describe can be implemented for all of these different configurations. Um, 
The null five is also complemented by standard uh, peripherals that you expect in uh, risk five systems, uh, including the debug module, the click. And whenever there's an open standard uh, available, we go to great lengths to implement that uh, open standard and adhere to it. The null five is available as part of our IP library that's called the GRLib. We provide this under a dual licensing scheme. So we have an open, free open source variant under the GPL license, which you can download from geisler.com, get GRLib. And we also have this available under a traditional commercial license uh, where we have different flavors of the IP library targeting terrestrial non-fault tolerant implementations or a fault tolerant implementation in FPGA or a fault tolerant ASIC implementation. The library includes some infrastructure to generate project files for most popular EDA tools. And we also have template designs for uh, different FPGA development boards. Uh, these template designs, uh, we also make them available as uh, pre-built FPGA bitstreams. So by following the links at geisler.com slash noel5, uh, you can download bitstreams for uh, two Xilinx boards and also a microchip or a fireboard. Together with this, we also provide a debug monitor and software tool chains from BRC up to uh, Linux the targets that support the NOEL 5 implementation. So moving to the fault tolerance features. Uh, I mentioned earlier that we focus on protecting internal uh, SROMs. So the fault tolerance features protect uh, memory blocks. We have cache memory tags, cache memory data, and we also have the register file. And we apply error correcting codes to protect data within this. Depending on the target technology, you may want to uh, select different types of ECC. Some FPGAs uh, have built in ECC capabilities in their uh, SRAM macros. Uh, examples include Xilinx with the 7 series and ultra scale. And also Microchip provides this for RTG4 and, and Polar Fire. Uh, for technologies that lack uh, ECC protected memory, and in some cases also, if you have ECC protected memory, you may want to have an RTL based uh, ECC implementation. And you select that implementation time what you want to uh, use when implementing the NOL 5. Uh, compared to previous processor implementations from us, the cache memories in NOL 5 are protected with a full SECTED code. SECTED stands for single error correction and double error detection. And this means that we can recover data locally uh, and correct it without doing a memory access. Uh, the Noble 5 also has a built-in hardware scrubber to prevent buildup in, uh, in memories that would uh, defeat the ECC codes. And what this scrubber does is that it stalls the CPU for a few cycles periodically. And then uh, it scrubs one location in instruction, cache, data cache, and the register file. So this completely removes the need for uh, doing any scrubbing in, uh, in software. Uh, the fault tolerance features also include error counters and diagnostic interfaces to, uh, to be able to keep statistics of, uh, of errors and also to inject errors for testing. The, this slide contains some more information about the specific error correcting code implementation that we have in the Noel 5 and also Leon 5 uh, cache. So each 32-bit word is protected by eight check bits. Uh, the check bits can be used to correct a uh, one bit error and detect a two bit error. And this is similar to what you would achieve with a conventional BCH code using 32, uh, 32 data bits plus uh, seven check bits. But in our implementation, the top half of the check bits is also the logical XOR of the other nibbles in the code word. So this means that we can detect an error by doing a simple parity check. And this helps to uh, remove a critical path that you would typically see in a microprocessor implementation. And this allows us to 
have this capability uh, without significantly de decreasing the maximum achievable operating frequency. Uh, this code also provides guarantee detection of 3-bit and 4-bit uh, adjacent errors. And uh, this is useful because on some technologies, a single particle strike can result in a multi-bit uh, multi upset. And being able to handle this case um, helps on, on some target technologies. Uh, and the, the techniques described here uh, have been uh, uh, are covered by a patent uh, application. So we have a fault-tolerant uh, processor model implementation, and we make use of uh, radiation-hardened uh, target technologies. So we still have a need to demonstrate that all of this works together. And together with ST Microelectronics, we have made a test chip implementation that includes the fault-tolerant NOL5 on ST's 28 nanometer FDSOI GOP2 technology. So we received components back uh, during Q2 of this year, and we have now started the uh, radiation test campaigns uh, to, to prove the Novel 5 implementation on, on a space grade technology. In this implementation, we achieved 800 megahertz operation frequency for the Novel 5 in the typical corner. And following some timing optimizations after this tape out, we expect that we can achieve uh, a gigahertz uh, for similar implementations in the future. Um, when it comes to proving this, the way we do it is that we uh, perform uh, radiation tests. We put the components under the beam. And uh, this is an example of a radiation test setup. To the left, you can see this uh, test chip, which is mounted in a socket. And, uh, this board is then uh, irradiated uh, while we are running software uh, on it. And uh, we have different monitors on the outside that uh, detect uh, any malfunctions due to radiation effects. Another application where the Novel 5 processor is used is in the GR7X5 uh, development. This is a complex system on chip component that is developed in a project which is uh, funded by CASE and the Swedish National Space Agency and the project is managed by the European Space Agency. So what we have here is an implementation of processors in cluster. We have four clusters uh, on the chip and each cluster contains uh, four uh, NOL5 uh, microprocessors. So each cluster is a multiprocessor system uh, in itself. Then we have various interfaces that, uh, that represent and extend what we have previously introduced for space applications. And we also have an on-chip accelerator and on-chip uh, embedded FPGA. Uh, we're currently doing the front-end design for, for this component, and uh, we, uh, we do not uh, expect to go into implementation until 2023 or, or later. Um, another user of the Novel 5, which is closer to market, uh, is the Skylabs Nano HPM uh, onboard computer. This uh, OBC makes use of the Novel 5 implemented in FPGA technology. And that allows Skylabs to provide a flexible uh, onboard computer system. So if you're interested in this, please uh, follow the uh, product link on the slide or go to skylabs.si. To conclude uh, this talk, the fault tolerance in this presentation has focused on microprocessor cores. Um, handling of errors, correctable and uncorrectable, needs to also to be done at a system level and it involves software support. Uh, a, a very important part of uh, creating a fault tolerant system is also to protect external memories using uh, error correcting codes. Uh, the Novel 5 and IP cores from our IP library uh, come with fault tolerance features and they focus on allowing correct operation in the presence of correctable errors and immediately handle detected uncorrectable errors. 
And this approach is a bit different from a data center approach where you detect an error and you stop later and you discard uh, the latest batch of work. Uh, it's also different from different lockstep implementations that may have long recovery times. Uh, we have, together with SD Microelectronics, created a fault tolerant uh, NOEL 5 implementation on a radiation hardened technology. And we're doing radiation tests of, of that test chip now. Uh, the NOL5 is available as part of the GRLI BIPI library, uh, which, as previously stated, is available in a, under a dual licensing scheme. And you have access to a free open source version at truegeisler.com slash getGRLib. We are also uh, undertaking uh, the, a project where we will implement a RISC-V-based uh, space-grade system on chip. And the product name for that one is GR7X5. And I hope to return with uh, additional presentations on the progress of that project. So thank you very much for listening to this presentation. And please reach out if there are any questions. Thank you. OK, it seems that I'm live. Uh, hi, I hope everyone is well. Uh, I see that I have received a few questions here. Um, let me start from the top. Uh, is the Novel 5 uh, based on a third party core? And uh, it's not, it's our uh, in house uh, development. Uh, uh, so it's been developed by our team in, in Sweden. I think uh, one thing that sets it apart from many other implementations is that uh, we've implemented this one in, in VHDL. Um, then there's a question on uh, how do you test that your fault tolerant hardware is working in simulation? Are you injecting faults? Uh, and we do that at least for uh, uh, in SROMs. Uh, it's a it's a good way to uh, sanity check the, the fault tolerant implementation. Uh, it's uh, it's also a very time consuming thing to do uh, to. Uh, uh, be, being able to cover all the states and uh, wait for uh, errors to, to propagate. So most of the simulations we do are, let's say, uh, targeted uh, injections, and we uh, rely to a, to a great extent on, on radiation testing to actually prove uh, the, that the fault tolerance concept works. Um, and then in the radiation testing, how do we know that any bit flips have actually occurred? And that, that's where we make use of the error counters. So we have uh, st statistic uh, counters that uh, keep track also on, of uh, correctable uh, errors. If we don't see uh, those uh, increasing, then uh, we, we know that we're testing in the wrong way or have a uh, problem uh, with the test. Um, then we have uh, software that makes use of the H extension, which uh, has, have we used. Uh, we have used various software uh, in, uh, in, uh, in verifying this. Uh, Xvisor is, is one software package. Uh, we have used internal tests. And we are also involved in a project together with uh, a company named Fentis as part of the DRISC project where they are porting their uh, Extratum next generation uh, hypervisor to make use of uh, what the target imported to risk 5 and then they are specifically extending it to make use of the uh, H extension. So I think that is uh, the questions that I, I will manage uh, within this minute. Uh, there's also a question, does the new ACC mean that we will allow, that we will support a copy back level one cache? And we could do that, but we, uh, we don't uh, have that in, in the milestone roadmap just yet. So thank you uh, very much for, for listening to the talk and uh, also for uh, posting questions. <laughs>